Capitol Hill Republican Senator Judd Gregg of New Hampshire, the ranking member of the Senate Budget Committee. Senator, it's always great to speak to you about so many issues. We'll start with health care, though. How are you, sir? Okay. Um, let's Whatever go, you wish. Cheryl. Let's Thank talk. You. Yeah, let's talk about health care. I'll start with I'll start with that with you. So now the Senate has sent it back to the House. Just from your experience, what kind of time frame are you seeing here? Are we going to get something done by Easter break at least? Oh yes, uh, the House is going to pass this and send it to the president. I presume they'll pass it tonight and send it on to the president tomorrow at the latest. Okay, so we're on track for that. So, you know, a lot of big companies, Caterpillar, Deer, have been yeah. bringing up the cost issue again, what it's going to cost them. Uh, well, just, that's, one, that's the recurring theme we're hearing on the business side. What are you hearing from your constituents about the future costs of the bill, of the law? Well, this, co this bill is going to cost a staggering amount. It's a $2.6 trillion expansion of the federal government. Uh, somebody's got to pay for that. And uh, basically, the private sector is going to bear a lot of that burden. Uh, and as a result, you're going to end up, in my opinion, with much higher taxes, much higher costs for health care in the private sector especially. Uh, that's going to reduce productivity. It's going to reduce investment. And it means that you'll probably lose jobs. Uh, that's just logical. I mean, you can't grow the government by $2.6 trillion and not have a, a fairly significant debilitating effect on the private sector because obviously the government, whatever the government spends, it has to take out of the private sector one way or the other. It either borrows it out or it taxes it out and that means the dollars that should be used more efficiently in private capital activity are being used to create bureaucracy, for lack of a better word. Well, you know, you're talking, as we talk about larger companies, I mean, the Bush uh, tax cuts set to expire, most of them anyway. Capital gains is back on the table. That capital gains tax may move higher. I mean, American companies, large ones in particular, are facing these kinds of issues, along with now more money being spent out, more capital, as you put it, being spent out for health care. Uh, is there anything that on the Republican side that you can do right now, uh, considering that basically health care reform went through with really without any Republican support, where are we? Well, where we are is we're confronting a government that has an inherently antagonistic view of markets, of capitalism, and especially dislikes profit. I mean, that's been made very clear by this administration and by this Congress. And so institutions uh, such as the student loan program, which was also nationalized in this bill, uh, take the entire private sector was wiped out. That's 31,000 jobs. It'll cost us an extra half a trillion dollars in borrowing at the federal level. Uh, that all of that activity was moved from the private sector into the public sector. You have this massive expansion of health care, which of course is going to have to be paid for uh, with higher taxes, which will produce less productivity in the private sector. I mean, Caterpillar estimates it, I believe, at $100 million, John Deere at $150 million. That goes right to jobs. I mean, that's money they can't spend on research, investment, or jobs. And, 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 and expanding the sale of their products. And they're just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, when you look at this, it's really the small businesses of America that are going to be most fundamentally hit under this, in my opinion, because of the really significant costs that are going to be put onto them in order to maintain insurance for their employees. Okay, another, uh, as promised, another, another issue I want to bring up with you, financial regulatory reform. I kind of find out where, from you where we're at at this moment, kind of what the state of play is. Are we going to get some type of compromise bill? Will it include the vocal rule or maybe some elements of the vocal rule? Well, we're not, it's not clear right now. Right now, a very partisan bill passed the Senate Budget Committee with no Republican votes, and it was a bill that was extraordinarily aggressive in the area of, I think, undermining our competitiveness as a nation in the, air, in the arena of creating capital and, and making credit available for American citizens. Uh, we hope we can improve it. Uh, Many of us are willing to work across the aisle on this. I've been trying to, for example, to negotiate the derivatives issue for a long time here. We've made some significant progress, but we haven't solved the issue. Where are uh, we? And, okay. Sorry, sir. Go ahead. And so it's not clear what's going to happen. Obviously, right now, unfortunately, the Senate bill is a high watermark because the House bill in many arenas is extraordinarily problematic. Uh, and so hopefully we can improve them both significantly before they become law. Otherwise, I think we are going to make it much more difficult to create capital and get credit in this country. Last question with regards to regulatory reform. Do you think that there's a place in the market for derivatives trading? Oh, it's critical. Oh, it's okay. just hugely critical. What did it, you know, I mean, our goal, my goal personally, is not to eliminate derivatives trading. It's just the opposite. It's to make, first, to make it sound, reduce the systemic risks by creating more transparency, making sure you have adequate liquidity in the derivatives market, 
But my second goal is to actually make the United States the best place in the world to use these types of instruments because they are a tremendous boon to a lot of different companies that create jobs in our country uh, and we should have a very vibrant derivatives market or we'll be in serious trouble. Republican Senator Judd Gregg of New Hampshire, it's always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. My pleasure. Well, coming up, we've